Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to Ed's Orchids. Well, it's a horrible day today outside. It's blowing a gale, it's raining, and it's uh, a bit warmer than usual. Anyhow, that's besides the point. So uh, we're going to have a look at these four plants here, which are a bit uh, different for me. And we've got a Brasidium orange charm, which is crossed by Oncidium megaglossum. We've also got a Bialara Campbell's Glacier. We've also got a Maclellanara Pagan Love Song. And we also have an Odontoglossum, which is uh, unidentified, which I bought from uh, a superstore. So I think we'll look first at the Odontoglossum. Now these are supposed to be a little bit finicky about their growing requirements. Uh, mainly about the temperatures, because they like it below around about 75 Fahrenheit and uh, they don't like it above uh, 50, 52 Fahrenheit or during the evening. They like to be damp, but they don't like to get soggy. And one day's uh, drying won't do them any harm whatsoever. But don't let them become too dry. Uh, they don't like a lot of fertiliser. Uh, once every three weeks, uh, will we'll be fine for them. Uh, and these, with the temperature being uh, in the Mazda Valley region, they will love uh, the company of uh, Mazda Valleyers. They like clean water, and they like small to medium bark, and they like to be under potted. This might be slightly over potted, but uh, we'll have a look at the roots in a minute. Uh, if you repot them, and so all us choose a, uh, a small pot size. Uh, regarding the light, I will give them above Phalaenopsis light, but below Catlia. Now then, this one had a suitable, they are growing very nicely. It got attacked just as the spike was coming up by the side of it. And we didn't think the spike would survive, but look at it. It's coming into bud. It's grown very, very well. So I'm really pleased with, the, with this one. Because all the uh, Adontoglossums are such beautiful flowers. Anyhow, we'll have a look at that one when it's flowering. And we said we'd have a look at the roots when I took it out of the pots. Well, it's got plenty of roots, this one. You can see, so I don't think it's uh, underpotted too much. So I think I'll leave it in this one. Now then we come to the Maclellanara Pagan Lussong and uh, this is a nice plant, it's got one, two, three nice pseudobulbs there and hasn't flowered yet but to growing very nicely and got unmarked leaves, that's very nice. Now these are a right mixture of a load of uh, Oncidiums and Brasidiums and all sorts of stuff but, uh, oh excuse me this particular one, the Pagan Love Song, is a cross between Oncidium, uh, Tiger Butter and uh, Brasidium Vericosa. Uh, you know, you could go on and on and on telling you what they're, uh, what they're from, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean much to us, does it? it just, we just want to have a look at the, uh, the blooms when they bloom. Now, once again, all Oncidiums have absolutely beautiful blooms on them. You know, you get your sherry babies and all that, which can have multi, multiple spikes on it and be weighted down with blooms, you know. And uh, once again, if you've got a big plant of oncidiums and you want to split it, when you do split it, make sure that every, di every division has got no less than four pseudobulbs on it. 
Now these require uh, slightly warmer temperatures than the odontoglossums. Uh, and uh, whilst watering they can be uh, they can be left to become almost dry but don't let them be dry for too long. Uh, fertilizing probably once every three weeks or four weeks uh, and it's important on these uh, type of uh, plants not to get the base here wet don't get them wet so you know you can uh, cause rot by that and never let them stand in uh, in water right on sidiums like uh, like a nice bright light uh, but uh, don't give them any sunshine or else you you ruin the leaves on them now there's not much I can say about these Maclellanaras uh, so uh, if I think if you treat them all as on sidiums they'll do just fine and the next one we've got is the Bialara Campbell's Glacier now this Bialara has also got some very nice roots on it so they're doing okay now these four plants I'm showing you today I only bought them in uh, August this year at our last show uh, somebody had uh, finished growing them and uh, one of our uh, dealers had brought them all up and she brought them to the show so I just brought four of them, all different ones and uh, that's also just showing me now now these plants, these Bialaras they're a right mix up of different uh, species uh, in the makeup they've got uh, Miltasia now that's a cross between Miltonia <coughs> excuse me and Brassia and it also includes Odontoglossum Cochleoda uh, to name a few and then uh, these plants Bialara are also known, known as Alicea Three. Now to care for these plants they need the same light as the others which I've shown you and which is uh, a very nice light with plenty of shade. Uh, for temperatures uh, these will go to lows of uh, 52 Fahrenheit and they'll go to the high of 80 Fahrenheit. And as with all these plants I'm showing you today, they all like a nice, a nice humidity of around 60-70%. They require a smaller bark medium as they have uh, pretty fine roots these. But like the others, the medium you put them in needs to be free draining. Uh, they like a smaller bark really, uh, with having finer roots. But I would add some uh, larger pieces of medium, uh, be it bark or perlite or similar things, just if, just to stop the uh, medium becoming soggy. And as with the other plants, they like to become uh, almost dry in the uh, in the winter time. Now these bialaras can have a rest in winter. Now these Bialaras will take uh, a rest period in winter. Uh, they'll also take lower, tem lower temperatures. Uh, they'll take less fertilization and less water. Uh, you don't need to give them any fertilization at all and only a minimum amount of water and uh, when it's becoming warmer again the weather and the growth starts, then we can resume the normal watering and, uh, and care that you take with all your other plants. So that's Bialara. And the last one is a... There we are. It's easy for you to read rather than me to say, isn't it? And we'll treat these as uh, a brassier rather than go into detail of the uh, different hybrids. So treating this as a brassier, 
uh, we'll say that these are known as uh, spider plants uh, because of the uh, long petals they have on the blooms and they have many many of them in a row and uh, they look quite magnificent. Uh, these can be grown in the home but uh, don't grow them on windowsills that uh, receive a lot of sun because uh, if you give the brassias a lot of sun then they will yellow the leaves and uh, they'll not look quite as nice. Uh, these, just like the others, like to be kept damp because there is oncidium in them and give them reduced water in, in uh, winter time. Uh, the active growth has slowed down. As for water, and it's about the same as the other three that I've just told you about, and uh, the temperature range of sort of uh, 13 to 26 degrees. You know, with lower temperatures in the uh, in the winter time, but we'll always give them uh, when you fertilise. Well, I haven't mentioned fertilisation of these yet, have I? But uh, they don't require a lot of fertilisation, and uh, give them sort of once every uh, once every couple of weeks. These, but we'll always make sure, and it's same for the other plants that uh, you give them a f good flushing every so often with uh, Epsom salts which uh, will rid uh, the medium of uh, any excess salts. And for potting uh, brassias and uh, especially this one here as well, uh, they need a slightly larger bark. You can use uh, coconut husks with charcoal and uh, perlite and that will just do fine for them. So that's about all I can tell you about these four plants. Uh, I hope it hasn't been too boring for you. And uh, until next time, thanks to all my subscribers, and uh, I'll see you all later. Bye.